Hello everyone. I wanted to make some brief comments about the release Elon Musk just did of the Twitter documents that happened yesterday as I record this. And I wanted to talk about why it's actually important that he did so. Um, but, but first, I also wanted to add a quick note about why free speech is so important, especially in light of the very public meltdown that Kanye, or Ye, I guess, um, just had in his subsequent suspension for inciting violence. Now, I've seen several tweets from people trying to point out that Ye's meltdown is exactly why the bans were in place to begin with. But um, as my cat exercises free speech here wanting attention, I believe that Ye's meltdown illustrates precisely why free speech is needed instead of the heavy hand of censorship that came before. And that's not to say free speech on a platform like Twitter should never be infringed. I actually agree that Ye should have been suspended after what he said. But the only reason I can say that I agree Ye should have been suspended is because I was able to hear him speak in the first place. See, the main problem goes like this. The instant somebody says something that is ambiguous and could possibly be problematic, but could just be something that's opposed to leftist ideology, the left instantly jumps upon the ban hammer and starts whacking away. This means that when leftist Twitter bans somebody, I have no idea whether it was legitimate or whether somebody with an ego trip arbitrarily deciding that you can't say that. I'm not going to let you say something that makes me feel sad. And there's simply no way to know which, is, which, which one it was because all the evidence of what was actually said gets hidden during the ban. It just says account suspended and, and that's it. And you're, this account has violated the terms and services. And you're like, how? No idea how. And often the person who got banned doesn't even know what they said that got them banned. Now, since I know for a fact that there were illegitimate bannings at Twitter and that they were not only there, they were common, there's literally no way to know at all whether any of them were legitimate. But when Ye was permitted to talk freely and openly and he went on his tirade against the Jews, it was clear and obvious that he was engaging in language that violated Twitter's terms of service even now. He was warned repeatedly, and when he refused, in fact, he actually escalated, then he was subsequently suspended. And this is all public. Anyone can look at it and judge for themselves now. Was this a legitimate suspension or was it a political ploy by somebody behind the scenes? And that also is a good thing because anyone who would come out now and say that Ye should not have been banned for what he said proves himself or herself or their self or other self, whatever they want to call themselves, that they're either an ignorant fool who is too lazy to go and look at the evidence of what was actually said that's all around, or it's somebody who is themselves an actual racist. Okay, this actually gives you the litmus test you need. So, so now we have a way to actually tell. I bring all that up about Ye, um, but it's really to focus on the expose that Musk just provided. Uh, see, on, on the one hand, there was nothing new in the documents that were provided by Musk. Every right-leaning individual who has followed the events that have gone on since October of 2020 knew everything that was in those documents had happened. For that matter, the leftists knew it too, although some of them would pretend they didn't know that any of that was going on. But the, the first benefit is that, of course, the evidence of what Twitter actually did is now out there, that we have the evidence of what, how they were behaving. And it can't be dismissed as if it's just a claim of something happening. The, the documents are public now. Secondly, and this is probably the most important of all the points I'm going to bring up. What Twitter was doing in 2020, they were still doing until October of this year when Elon Musk finally bought the company. And not only that, 
it's not only that Twitter was doing it, Facebook, YouTube, Apple, every company in Silicon Valley who's part of social media at all was almost guaranteed to have been doing the exact same thing. The people who ran Twitter's trust and safety team, which there's an Aurelian term for you, they're the same type of people who run YouTube's trust and safety, who run Instagram's trust and safety. All of those are the same mindset of people. And, you know, just like a parent who comes home and they find an empty cookie jar and they see their three kids sitting there with cookie crumbs all over their faces, when one of them confesses, the others have a very difficult time walking their way out of that when they all have the same cookie crumbs. Third, though, and uh, this is actually a point that Musk himself raised, the real problem isn't so much that Twitter decided to censor certain content. They have the right to do so as the owner of a platform that's providing this. Um, the, it's a private company, as the saying goes. Now, there's an argument of whether it needs to become a public utility or not, but set that aside. It's not right now. Legally, they have the right to censor whatever they want to. The problem is that they did so at the behest of the government. And I, I know I've seen it on Twitter already. The leftists are exclaiming, but Trump was president at the time. It was Trump's government. Um, and um, I must have missed that bit in civics class where the entire government is one single individual who happens to be the president at one time. Like Congress just doesn't exist. Uh, senators and representatives, they're not part of government or something. They don't have the ability to sway people with the political power that they have because it's only the president who matters. And vice president, former vice president at the time, uh, Biden, uh, wasn't part of the government because he was running for office and was a former vice president. And somehow that's not government. Um, okay, let's go with that for a second. If you're a leftist and you actually think that, what's what are you going to do if you find out that in October of 2024 that Trump asks Musk to you know deal with some accounts on Twitter that have been tweeting mean things about him? And then... Twitter does, um, because that's actually what the DNC did. Yeah, lost in this whole Hunter Biden laptop story is the fact that the DNC itself singled out specific tweets that they wanted suppressed, including those by uh, James Wood, the actor, and those tweets were subsequently suppressed. It's not just the laptop story here that's been revealed, okay? Members working for the U.S. government explicitly requested that private citizens of the United States have their right to free expression, a right guaranteed by the First Amendment that the U.S. government cannot violate. They requested that it be trampled, and it was done without a trial, without representation, without any means to defend oneself. In fact, not even with the knowledge that it was being done. The Courts have consistently said that if the government is making these types of requests, that's the same thing as an order because the government has a chilling effect on free speech when it requests something. You don't deny requests of the government knowing that they have the ability to punish you if you don't do what they say. So a request is an order and courts have been consistent with that. This is obvious to everyone. And to that extent, what Twitter did itself isn't as much of a problem as the fact that the government agents who made the requests are violating the Constitution specifically. And it doesn't matter at that point that Twitter willingly followed along with it, since, I mean, more than 99% of their donations from Twitter employees definitely went to the Democrat candidates. That's open source knowledge. See, the initial request is what the Constitution violation was at and to the extent that Twitter employees knew that and they still went along with it, they are complicit in such an action too. But there would not have been an action in the first place. There wouldn't have been anything against the Constitution if it not for the government violating the Constitution by making that request. So I'll just leave it with this. I want you to bear that in mind. It was both parties who made requests. It just happened that because there were more left-leaning Twitter employees, 
the left-leaning stuff got banned a whole lot more often. Both parties did that, though. It, it wasn't like it was only the DNC doing this. That also came out in this document that both parties requested it. So bear that in mind that with every single election, you have a choice to perpetuate the same thing over and over and over again, pretending that by doing so, you're voting for the lesser of two evils and that you're really just voting for the slower way to die instead of the really quick way when you could actually just open your eyes to the fact that you have the ability to choose not to die at all if you just grow a spine and take that opportunity.